to episode eight of Urban Tanga Nights Talks. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Gerald and Santi, who are the driving force behind Secret, Secret Tango Stories, which is a project to produce tango films. So, first of all, welcome, and we hope you're both safe in both uh, Swindon, the area of England, and uh, Argentina. Um, so, first, the first question is, is how did you two sort of put together the or come up with the idea of secret tango stories. Do you want to start Santi and I'll add to it? Uh, I, well, it's, it's an idea that it starts in when I was making a tour, I went to general home and he had this really nice song and story and we start to develop uh, some ideas and the first idea was to make a, a, a play for a theater and the idea was to to mix some images from Buenos Aires with a live music and dancing and when we start I start to to film and to produce here in Argentina we realized that we maybe have a film because um, the film starts to to have his own life I think and uh, the project was start to grow to grow until become this that is an idea to make more films about secret tango stories but uh, everything starts uh, because of this uh, song story and I all, always have the idea to make some tangos or some parts of the show with translating the tangos because when you sing and people don't understand what you're singing, it's, it's, it's something strange, minimally strange. Like uh, the half of the song, the, the story, all the emotions that are involved in, a, in, a, in the lyrics, it's hard, it's very difficult if you don't understand language. You can like feel the music and it's another another experience. So that is something that I always want to do, to, to try to share with people that, that speak another languages, try to uh, translate. It's very difficult to translate tangos. Uh, it's very difficult because uh, one word could mean a lot of things, um, in, like in English, it's, it's, it's very difficult to translate, but we tried, that's why we also try to make some tango in English, and, and we are trying to, to make this to, you know, to, to people get uh, more uh, interest in tango and, and could go into the tango, not only because of the dance, also because of all what is involved in tango culture. I suppose one, uh, this is one thing that um, we had from the feedback as uh, we hosted one of your film premieres in Swansea uh, back in November of 2019, that we had two people in the audience who have uh, hearing issues. So one is, uh, you would describe them as deaf, I suppose is the best way to describe them. For, uh, but uh, what they found really nice was because the, the film is uh, your first film uh, was effectively a silent film and the story was told through the lyrics of the songs but the lyrics were translated on the screen so they could get a sense of what was actually happening by just reading it which was very nice for them and also when obviously there was a song in that uh, film which was translated into in which was in English and again, as a just as a listener, I, I don't speak Spanish, so just actually understanding what the lyrics are going on about in real time without having to sort of refer to a lyric sheet and then a translation program after was something that was, uh, it was nice because you actually felt a, an actual connection to the music rather than sort of just having sound in the background. And I suppose this goes on to Gerald, you're a musician as well and you were yeah, I guess um, it's interesting. We all come from different perspectives and different different life experiences coming into these activities. Um, 
I started playing piano at the age of four um, because my father was a music teacher as well as um, teacher in other subjects. And then going on to Swansea University, I was, I was in Swansea University from 1968 until 1975 studying engineering, but I migrated also to the School of Music in Swansea because I, that's where I could find a piano to play. And then I was influenced by people like Professor Keith Morris at that time because he was writing original musicals in the university. And separately, my father was the musical director of an operatic society. So I was brought up actually in a house of music, um, uh, live music and uh, people rehearsing music. But I was also interested always in new things and uh, original things, but respecting traditions. So when I started, um, well, going back a little bit then to about 10 years ago, I visited Argentina for the first time with my professional work. And being curious, I ended up going into a couple of um, uh, milongas in um, Buenos Aires, even though I couldn't dance and didn't know much about the music. And that was probably my start uh, on, on a tango journey because my wife had always wanted to learn to dance a dance with me. And I said, well, if I'm going to learn to dance, I don't like ballroom dancing, so I'm not going to become a ballroom dancer. But if we're going to dance, I'm going to learn the Argentinian tango with you. And that's, that's how I started with the tango. And then moving on, uh, because I had the luxury of moving into retirement, um, I went to, I've been to quite a lot of shows like Flavia and Vincent, who are, as you know, television stars. I've been to Saddle as well, shows of visiting Argentinian artists in London. Um, and I really have enjoyed the shows, but they're choreographed shows. And the, and the stories to me uh, didn't have much depth and passion to them. So that's probably what inspired me a little bit to write my first bits of tango music was seeing that maybe there's something, a bit of space, something to do something a bit different, which is to tell real stories reflecting real life, but in the English language, not the Spanish language, because I can't speak Spanish, but doing something original, which respects the traditions of the Argentinian music. So that's how I began to write a couple of songs. I just thought they were for myself in the house until I shared the songs with Santi when he visited us. And then the inspiration a little bit came from me, but actually all the depth of thinking which has turned into a film, the first film, has come from Santi. And Santi's also had a big influence of me in improving aspects of my understanding of Argentinian rhythms and tango rhythms, etc. So the film and the music, uh, the music in the film, sorry, um, has come from, yes, uh, some music myself um, on my piano here in uh, close to our ancestor, but actually respected Argentinian musicians working with Santi to reorchestrate and to rearrange the music in the traditional Argentinian style. And uh, I am actually very excited by the film and the music because the music is original, but it's got this tradition of respecting the instrumentation and the orchestrations of some of the fam famous tango artists from the past. So it's modern, but it respects its history. So, then, okay, so that's Santi then. Um, when you first started hearing Gerald's music, were you hearing it from the point of view of as a musician or from the point of view of being a director? When I hear the music of Gerald? Yeah. Well, were you actually in the role of a director at that point or were you hearing it as a musician? Uh, Yes, I, I'm. I always try when when I like music. I like uh, movies. So always in my life, everything was uh, mixed up, and and I I want to to tell. I always like to to I like to tell stories. And I, I love the silence. The, the silence is something very important in, in movies and in music too. When, 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 you have a, when you have a lot of notes, it's like, it's, it's easy. You can play a lot of notes. But when you have the silence, you have the expectation of the, it, it's not the silence like the final, chan, chan, that is okay, the final. But when you have, dan, da, 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 dan, dan, there is something in the middle that makes you, wonder what is going on and um, and I think that the, the music of Gerald it's it's very uh, I, I don't know how to express it in English it's very 
I see images when I, uh, I hear that kind of music. So uh, what I try is, is to, to make it more tango and we, and we develop the music uh, with a traditional, like it's only piano, bandoneon, guitar and violin. So it's a, because also we think to make this a play, so keep it, uh, uh, keep it, uh, you know, uh, small to, for the tour and everything. So what we try to do is, is, is to make something that people could enjoy. And, 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 um, and this thing to tell the story with the images, with no dialogues is something uh, not not easy to do, but I think that is 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 like pure cinema. You know, you only see images and things happening. And the tango and the lyrics really, they tell you another parts of the story, not what you are looking at. So it's like co complementary to tell you the story. You know. So I think that both of us make a, a good job trying to 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 make this this film and 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 to be something that you don't get worried. You know that was my base, my big uh, concern, not to get worried to see something that oh, it's nothing happening and it's only music and dance and want to be a film, not a video clip. It, it's something that interesting to develop. So, uh, How long did it uh, take for sort of the first sort of fruition of this idea to come to the point where you were sort of last November? How, was it years, months? I suppose it's with Gerald. Well, it was pretty, uh, we started in December really in December of 2018 and yes in November and October we were in England with the movie it was when I, I see in perspective it was pretty fast really <laughs> what we do uh, but it was hard because last year in Argentina was a big crisis so in the middle uh, all the budget blows up because here a big inflation and the valuation of the currency. So really we have a lot of, uh, and also we want to make something really small and that get big and more people involved to work. So it was really hard in a moment. I, I, I have several moments that I was very hard to continue because of a lot of matters, and when I finished the the shooting days, that was very tight too. Uh, was hard to cut the movie. It's like uh, okay, it was when when you imagine something, you go to the reality, you make it. You always have something. Not always is like you imagine. You always have uh, a frustration, you know, in in all creating. You, you imagine something and almost it's impossible to be exactly what you imagine, what you are seeing. Always, it's, or it's different, could be better, could be not. You have to adapt a lot of things. So uh, that is what we did and, and try to solve problems and we have a wonderful team, very professional. I think, I think that's friends. a big part, Santi, of what you managed to do was you managed to put some very good people around you, um, you know, with Claudio Gonzalez and with Julia and with uh, Sandra um, in, in your team uh, and your musicians, Toby. You, you, you actually put together an extremely good team of both musicians and dancers who respected what you were trying to achieve as a director. Yes, and, and the technicians too. Really, there is a lot of people that this, this is because all the, the people involved because if not it was impossible to make it in so yes it's, it's very important uh, the, the i love movies because of that because it's impossible you to make it alone you have to work in community and when you have uh, a big production and money okay everything you solve with money but when you don't have a big production and you have to make it 
you solve it with love, with uh, energy, with synergy. And so that is what we did. Um, and, and you could see always that in, 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 in the screen. Uh, you could see the dedication, the, it's all, it's, it's make it, when needs make it with love, we, you could see it really. And, and well, now we are trying to, to finish, to get the, the final, the final, because our tour was to, to see how people, uh, to have some feedback, and uh, now we are, I'm cutting again the movie, making uh, not so long. And um, well, now we, we keep working in, in the movie, no? in, in that first movie. <laughs> Que la nostalgia no compensa y que la ausencia no da paz. Que el verdadero amor de quien te ama deje la misma antigua trama. Será siempre igual. Que la cosa más linda de este mundo es vivir cada segundo como nunca más. So it might be good, Santi, um, if Chris can allow the time, just to share a little bit about your experience also in, uh, in Swansea, because um, I decided that we would spend an additional night in Swansea originally, and I introduced Sw uh, Santi to the um, musical oh. community in the Ale House in Mumbles. Yeah. And um, I think you intended to spend one night there, and you were there for about four weeks or something, and you met some very interesting and creative people uh, who would want to collaborate with you in the future, Santi? It might be worth expanding a little bit on that. Yes, that was was really incredible because uh, we went to your festival to your uh, your event, uh, Chris. That was really amazing. Everything what you did there was really nice. And and I always like to play other kind of music like bossa nova when i'm touring with tango i love to to see and share other people latin people or yeah. or local musicians that love other kind of music so general uh, get this this wonderful place the a house in in mumbles and and just recite us and, and well you went there and you danced. We have a really great night. because we had a mixture of some tango dancers from our class, including, so we had Ben come along and Kai. Um, so Kai had only been learning tango for about three weeks at that point, and they were up dancing. And there was a, there was a good group who were, uh, I suppose, of the pub locals who were there, and they really enjoyed it as well, and then do the music. And obviously your brother came along as well to play. So that was a really nice night. Yeah, but then after after the after the event um, in in the university and after the music night in the alehouse, uh, Santi then decided to spend more time in in Wales and in Mumbles, and that's yes, uh, interesting. That, we made that, introductions to some very interesting people. Yes, just uh, just the 
Egg House, uh, from the Egg House, he wants me to return to make more shows with my brother. My brother was there too. So um, we did. I I I, I returned in, in in the I think two or three weeks uh, after that. I, I returned, and a lot of things happens that I have to stay because I I, I get one show cancelled and that I have to play in Bristol. So I keep staying in with, with jazz there, meeting a lot of uh, wonderful people, musicians, and we start to, to imagine another story in the Age House and in Wales. And really, it's this magic that happens sometimes that a lot of people start to be interest uh, actors and directors and producers and musicians uh, and so we start to to develop a, a friendship and uh, this project to make another secret tango stories between wales and argentina so all that starts because of your invitation chris so you are a very important part of this all of, of all this developed. Well, and that, that was, it was scheduled um, that Santi would come back to the UK in April uh, this year, but obviously we have suspended all that for 12 months now. But um, the intention was uh, for Santi uh, to form a new musical uh, combination, a new musical collaboration, which would be touring in Wales and in Bristol and uh, the southwest of England in parallel with doing some new filming activity with the second Secret Tango Stories film. But we've put all that into suspense because of the, um, the virus mm -hmm. until hopefully 2021. And in the meantime, Santi's working on other original ideas for uh, other Secret Tango Stories films out in Argentina. Yes, so there's actually a lot going on creatively. One, one short-term thing with the Welsh connection, but also other potential film ideas are being evolved now by Santi in Argentina. Yeah, I suppose then, that's, since we've gone on to it, uh, if this is going to be a film series, uh, Gerald, are you still going to be involved with the music in that? Or well, if it... I'm wanted, I'll be involved. Um, <laughs> I, uh, at the moment, uh, we, we, I think Santi has got the same philosophy as me. Um, if other people want to contribute and, and contribute music, contribute ideas, we want to be an open uh, community, not a closed community to towards new ideas and new concepts as we as we embark on on the journey i've been working on some new music and i've been sending music to santi and um some he likes some he doesn't like some we want to change the rhythms some we want to add rhythms but we're not short at the moment of musical ideas uh, a big a big aspect obviously is money and funding and we're going to have to work quite creatively to find ways of funding the film in wales but some of the connections that Santi has made are very receptive to work, working with us on the funding side, both in Wales and the parallel funding in Argentina. So we are reasonably optimistic about putting the funding together for the second film. And then separately from that, um, because Santi is based in Argentina and looking at the realities of travel and the complexities of the post-virus situation in the arts and creative scene, We've decided to focus at least two or three of the further stories uh, to see if we can do the whole story in Argentina. Because there's a lot of creative capacity in Argentina, a lot of musical capacity, dancing capacity, filmmaking capacity that can support <laughs> Santi, provided that we can actually get the right funding um, together. Um, because nothing can happen unless we can raise funding. Yeah, I ask, um, how does the fun funding work? for like a film like this. Do you, is it uh, from, I suppose, uh, most with, like most businesses, they look for return from the product coming out. So uh, will the funders be expecting a sort of return from sales of DVDs? Is it from the uh, being released into like theatres that will sort of see the return? Santi can expand on this, but if, I, if we go back to the first film uh, that you saw in Wales, um, obviously, uh, there was no previous film in that genre, 
So no track record. So you could not go to an external investor and say, give us 10,000 pounds or 100,000 pounds to create a film. We had to demonstrate some capability and some credibility. So the first film actually is a joint venture between um, myself and Carol through my company, Carinium Innovation Limited and Santi. So the first film, film is 50-50 funded by Santi, myself and Carol. Um, in the UK through my company, Carinium Innovation Limited. Now, if you try to write financial projections for a product which hasn't been created, doesn't exist, and hasn't been shown to anybody, you can't write a business plan for that. You have to do it as an act of faith, uh, because it's a high risk, uh, potentially very interesting venture, but you have to be prepared to lose the money. Okay. So, uh, I certainly, with Carol, in the first investment, we said, well, look, we trust Santi, we like Santi, uh, we want to do something together, but in reality, we don't know whether we can do it, and we don't know, even if it is done, what the reception will be. So that's why we decided to launch the film um, to people that we respected in the European tango community, rather than putting a big blast together for marketing in a general sense because we thought we would show it to uh, respected tango groups, different types, your group in Wales, um, Anne Chen and Tango Cotswold, um, Anna, Anna and uh, the people in um, Leo Tango in Bristol, uh, with Diana Lipich down in Cornwall, because we wanted to get um, people who were involved in the tango scene to look at it from different perspectives and to get the feedback. And that's why we did a soft, what we call a soft launch of the film, rather than a full commercial launch. And that's given, I think, both Santi and Carol and myself enough confidence to say, well, now we need to look for further investment, having got a first film and a track record and a demonstration of capability to try and do, do the further six or seven films in the series. We can't fund that ourselves. Yes, but now that, we can fund it, hopefully, with the track record and the credentials of the first film. Yes, I suppose the first film, you know, so, uh, I'm sort of looking at this from a, like a tango dancer point of view and sort of event organiser point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose one of the things that we you really want to try and get is like sort of tango dancers sort of talking about the film and actually interacting with it and sort of game. So uh, will the, um, the first tango, uh, secret tango project or secret tango story film be released on a DVD or will it go through a sort of larger scale release in or another yes, two the, re, really the the industry of of making films is changing in these last years we everyone know the dvd is something that is the past no one used to yeah. i give you a dvd and maybe you can play it now you don't have a dvd to play mm -hmm. so it's a uh, you know um uh, how do you say, an old uh, technology, the DVD. So now we are with all this streaming, uh, Netflix and all these channels, COVID and others. And that is the, the future of, the, of a lot of productions. Uh, we have several ways to do this, how to develop. We want to make like, uh, four, eight uh, stories or even more. I, I developed some scripts. I have already three scripts, uh, three or four almost, for the next movies. And the idea is, is, is uh, the first idea was to go step by step because we have this Welsh possibility to make uh, a co-production between Wales and Argentina, and that we can found it uh, with the also here we have a strong uh, industry. The the state the they they give you money to produce films, and that is one possibility to go step by step one film each film. But all this. Coronavirus crisis uh, delay all that develop. Uh, we can, I can. The idea was to go in April and maybe in September shoot the the next film. But now with all this 
this crisis, I, we changed a bit our perspective and we are trying to to develop the other scripts and to develop the project and maybe try to get uh, some Netflix or other network that maybe could put the money to develop other films. So it's a different kind of, of business and of ways to, produ to make the, this happen. But what we don't want to do is to lose the control, like to be like, uh, this has to be a process, uh, an artistic process, not doing to, to make something, uh, you know, only a business. I, I, I think that, that when it's preferred to be slow and to make something good, that to, to make it big and, and bad, you know. So we are, we are trying all, all the possibilities. Now we have the time, I have the time to develop the project, to develop the scripts, to develop some more new music. And then we are going to spread this and to present to, to investors and other people that want to be involved. But the reality is that this kind of project, you can sell it uh, in, in in movies like a movie traditional movie in a theater you the, the national television that we have here and in other countries is almost uh, dying the production because they can't compete with others only bbc or really big networks can make uh, and so we are we i will try we will try to to develop we are working on that to develop the project and try to have some meetings but the important thing that we have the pilot that the, that is the first film and um, i think it's a new concept it's something uh, different so but it's an artistic thing it's something that you you will not sell it in prime time you know yeah. and it's for a specific target and and well, I, I will develop the project and then I tell you how, how we are going to make it happen. I think the other thing, Santi, which is interesting is um, so, because you have some respected friends in Argentina who are in the uh, filmmaking and in the music business, you've shared some of the early stage concepts for the future films with them. Um, it might be worth sharing a little bit of the feedback that you've had from these people uh, now they've been exposed to some preliminary ideas for the future films and, and what they think about those pieces of music or those ideas. Yes, uh, I, here in Argentina we have in the last years a lot of Nigerian, Niger, Ni, Nigerian people, how do you say it? Well, people from Nigeria yep. that really, are, uh, Buenos Aires particularly, uh, in the last 10 years, really change it's, it's a different city that than i was that was when i was young so one of the story is about is about an exile uh, a nigerian exile and the first tango have a, a heavy component of of drums that then uh, in the in the development of the tango we lose in tango but in a lot of the first tango, you can hear the, the, the drums in the milonga and even in tango play. So that is a, a very, you know, the, the Negro tango is something that we uh, put away. So it's interesting to, 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 to make a revival of that kind of, of tango. So, this story is about Ahmed and, and a young girl in a, in a young tango dancer. And I, I think it, it's interesting because the idea, the general idea of the project is also that tango is something that, that uh, help people to join, to, 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 to feel the same passion for something. And, and, and you can make links between people uh, with tango and with tango music, with tango dancing. And we so, use this as a bit of the theme, uh, Chris. Um, so the secret tango stories, if you like, is the brand above these, the series of films. But 
Um, within tango, as you know, the words connection and embrace are two key words in the tango community. And what Santi is trying to do with me uh, is to actually take those two words and make sure that those words express themselves in each of the original stories and in each of the films. So connections between people from different cultures, connections between rich people and poor people, connections, say, between the classical music world and the tango world is part of the theme, if you like, which underpins the brand of the secret tango stories. And the connections then come in the film to the passions and the ups and downs of life. So we, we're trying to take these two theme words, which are meaningful to the tango community, and to transpose them into original stories under the Secret Tango sto Stories brand. Okay, so, uh, so there's, so the, the link from them isn't something that you would... The, it's basically taking the links between all forms of tango. So what's happened in tango all throughout history and having that as the underlying theme behind it rather than... And even the, also looking to the future, it. even looking to the future as well. You know, looking, looking at um, genres of music now, which are the grime music and hip hop and um, rap music. Because actually some of the early tango music was in the rap style. It wasn't a natural singing style. It was a, a talking style over music. So sometimes people put themselves into these musical compartments. And um, Santi and I share a philosophy of exploring sometimes some of these rigid boundaries and making them a bit more, a bit more flexible. Yes, yeah, so taking away the boxes that people put themselves into and look at it as a whole and how everything interacts. So uh, the next part, uh, what would you like to see from tango dancers in relation to your actual films? How would you like to see them interacting with it? Because obviously you have a Facebook page, um, which I think is still going, so I'll put a link down below, which obviously people can like to keep up to, keep up to date with you. But what would you like to see tango dancers actually, how would you like them to react and interact with your uh, projects? Santi, uh, it's a it's a good question. I, I we are not good in 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 Facebook and in all these uh, media thing. That is one of the the holes that we have in, in in our project that we are trying to fix. Because I really don't have the spirit to be always in the Facebook and posting things, and we will need someone specific to do that job for us. And this, the idea of, of, the, of the project is, is try to, to give, it's like, uh, it, to give something to tango community to, that maybe could help to grow the, the tango community, that maybe people that want to, that likes the tango, but they don't know how to dance, and they maybe they are like a shame to go. So it's a way to, to to share with the people the passion of tango and and maybe that is the, the goal the real goal of, of all the project to try to to grow the tango community and to to attract people from other that is near tango near the tango maybe because they knew someone that danced or they always love it but they never so there is a lot of people that maybe could be attracted by the tango, dancing the tango because of films or music. Or, so that is uh, one of the ideas. Um, and the other thing with what we try to do is uh, to not, not forget that the tango is about embrace and feelings and improvisation. It's not about a technique or a step or to, to to make something so it's about feeling so that's what we try to transmit it it's about embrace and feeling and dance with your partner and it's not about steps you know it's important to have a good technique but you have to get a good technique to forget everything when you dance uh, because if you are important. thinking about the step that you are going to do the dance will not flow, definitely. 
So another, another point which is um, perhaps interesting is that uh, when Santi visited uh, us last year, I introduced him to one of my friends who is a former senior person in the BBC and is now an independent film producer. He's not involved in tango, not involved in music particularly, but we showed him the film and um, he actually gave some very good and objective feedback to Santi particularly around his filmmaking. And one I think, one I think of the key things that Santi is able to do because of his passion for the music and his experience of the tango genre, as a filmmaker, it gives him a different insight into how to film and how to capture the passions and the emotions associated with the music and the dance. So actually, um, this guy is called Phil Peel and he's a respected uh, independent film director, but he was very respectful of Santi's um, empathy with uh, the music and the dancing as a filmmaker. Um, the angles he chooses to make and the way he chooses to film the motion and the movement is not, a, is not a skill which a normal film producer would have. And that's where I think we actually have something quite special in Secret Tango Stories. We're not just showing like a video on YouTube of some people dancing. We're actually interacting with the dancers and hopefully um, demonstrating to the audience some of the emotion and passion that's associated with both the music and the dance through the filmmaking. And I think that is a skill that Santi has got, which I've, I've not really seen with any other independent filmmaker. Well, thank you. But the, you, 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 you throw me too much flowers, but <laughs> one of the things that, that we do, uh, that, I, that we do is uh, really what you see in the film it's, uh, I, I don't uh, give the music to, the, to Claudio and to the actors and to the dancers. They don't know what they are going to, to, to dance until, you know, two or three days before, uh, before the shooting. Because I don't want them to, to uh, well, they are really creative and they have no problem. I give them the music a bit, uh, before, because they have to have some idea to, but but no, uh, you know they don't rehearse any any anything that you see in the film is rehearsed, and also the actor, the acting. I always try to make it spontaneous, like not a lot of rehearsal. I, I we work with the actors, but about the emotions, about the connections, about how they feel with each other, not about, uh, you know, making the scene or it's, it's about how you construct the, 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 the character and then you can give something in the screen. But it's not about to, to, to rehearse. But well, here we don't have uh, words, uh, but it's not about what movement and how I do something. It's about how you feel and when you feel something, you can, you can make it. That is the idea, to, to be natural, you know. And I think we got that in the film. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose that's yeah, trying to give that natural feel is what sort of entices people into it because it makes you almost feel invested. If something's like this sort of perfect choreographed, very precise uh, sort of step pattern or movement, people watch it and go, well, yes, but that's just like watching a machine. I suppose when you're trying to tell a story um, through emotion that you don't want a machine, you want something organic, I suppose, from that. Yes, and this, the, and this thing that, the, that you see the characters and the situation and you say, okay, this is real. I, I, I believe that this could happen, that this is a guy and a girl in, in in Buenos Aires, struggling for life, and uh, that is something very important for me to, to that. What you see, you you okay? This is real. This could happen. This is not fictional, you know. Yeah, that's good. Right, we're probably running out of time now, but uh, is there anything that either of you would like to say or sort of just talk about um, before we finish? Well, I think, I think from my, my viewpoint, uh, Chris, one of the things that was interesting to me with the, the launch tour that we did with the film is that we wanted to go to different places with different types of vibes, if you like, around the tango scene. But actually, um, that requires risk on the behalf of the tango organisers. 
So I'd like, actually like to thank you particularly, but also the Tango organizers in Bristol and in Tango Cotswold and in Tango Cornwall, um, who actually took the risk of showing the film to their Tango communities and hosting Santi and myself and allowing us to play some music and to show the film with, the, with your communities. Because without that feedback, we can't go to the, have the confidence to go forward, which we are, but that confidence has come from the people in the various Tango communities. <coughs> Yeah, thank you. Well, I've, our philosophy has always been that if there's opportunities out there, and how many of, of, of other opportunities would we have ever had to put on an event like this? So we thought we didn't really consider that to be that much of a risk before there was more of this huge opportunity for the people, the dancers in Swansea and South Wales, to actually be, see something and be almost be part of it with giving you the feedback that they wouldn't normally get. And therefore, the, this adds. In Argentine tango is more than just a dance, it's a cultural thing. And this, the culture continuously changes and continually updates and adds bits added to it. And the way we thought about it, this is a way that we can actually add something to that culture and hopefully have some form of laughter and effect. So we're very grateful that there are people like you out there that actually go out and do something which isn't just a malongo or a tango festival, it's something different which we can all engage in and enjoy. Yeah, thank you, Chris. And yes, I, 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 I agree with the words of Gerald, that really we have very good uh, hosts in, in UK, in Denmark too, and they've been there too. And Poland, Poland as well, Santi. Sorry? <clears throat> You also have some good feedback in Krakow as well, in, in uh, Poland, when you went there. Yes, yes, but with the film, I, I went to Denmark, not, not to Poland. And, and yes, uh, I have a very good uh, people in Poland love tango, and in specifically in, in, in Krakow. And one of the stories I want to develop there, because Poland have a, a huge history with, with tango. One of the most famous uh, uh, singers in in the night uh, before the war was uh, a tango singer. So there is a lot of, of of things that that we can develop because one of the strange things, if you want, is uh, that we develop some tango in English. And that is something maybe strange now, but the reality is that tango have been uh, made in a lot of languages in the 1920, 1930. In, in France, in, in, in a lot of languages, and also in, Pol in, in Poland. And that is one of the things that we need really to try to see how people receive that because uh, there is a lot of codes and things in the tango uh, in the tango movement that uh, that is stor historic here in Argentina too. We have this. Pro we still have people that are saying that says that uh, Piazzolla is not tango. You know so. We have all these codes that are really something that we need to we need to to think about it. Uh, I know I don't know if throwing them away, but you know this thing that only the the guy can get the girl and all these kind of things that it's it's like something that we need to to change. Also, why not we can sing a tongue in English, but we have to create a new tango because you can't translate a Spanish tango to an English tango. That is something that you will never get something good, maybe in one or two tango, but it's, in, it's in almost impossible. That's, what's, that why, that's why I, I try to create a new tango in English. And we, I, I try, I try a lot, I'm not so good. And I, could get only one that I thought that okay, this this I think is is could be in English and uh, balls. 
and but I, I love to 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 go to that places where you don't know really what is going to happen that you get a risk but you feel that that is something good to do for for all the, the you know that uh, for for everyone really to to try to 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 break walls to 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 go to some why i can't sing a tango in english uh, even um, gardel sings in in english in in one film so anyway, I'd like to thank Gerald and Sante for, to, uh, for being with me uh, today and sharing their experience of filmmaking and music. Um, if, they're back, if they are back in the UK and they're doing uh, work, please, um, we hope that we'll see you there. And um, please uh, check out their website, Facebook page. Uh, we'll put all the links um, down below in the description. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and the Urban Tango Nights uh, Facebook page. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Urban Tango Nights Talks.